You are listening to Deliberate Living, a podcast that inspires, empowers, and encourages listeners to live life more authentically. My name is Holly Priestley, and I'm a full-time nomad who has been living in my 1997 Ford van for more than a year. I travel the United States with my dog, learning how to live with more authenticity. I explore different ways people choose to ditch the prescribed life we've all been sold and live on their terms, finding freedom and happiness however they choose. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Deliberate Living Podcast. This one's going to be a little bit different than a lot of my recent episodes. I am going to do a solo episode about dating on the road. This is a question that I get all of the time, and I think it deserves its own its own show, basically. Uh, moving forward, I will obviously continue doing the interviews. Next week will be a great interview that I know you guys will love. Um, but I also want to intersperse some of these solo episodes and episodes where I have guests on um, to talk about specific topics and to address certain questions that I get asked all of the time. So this is the first in those. And basically, I'm going to talk about my personal experience dating on the road. So a few notes before we get started. Um, Now that the podcast is, what, 15 or so episodes in, uh, I know that I have a few regular listeners out there, and I love each and every one of you. If you like this podcast, I would really appreciate it if you would go to your favorite um, podcast hosting service and leave a review. Uh, A good five-star review is great to help other people who need this information and who are curious about deliberately alternative lifestyles, uh, find the podcast. So if you could go ahead and leave me a five-star review, maybe a comment about which episode was your favorite and why, or um, topics you'd like to see me discuss in the future, or anything of that nature, that would be great. So thank you very much. And let's get started with Dating on the Road, part one. All right, so a few things to start off. Again, these are just my experiences, and so your mileage may vary as with any uh, van experience or any dating experience or really any lifestyle experience at all. Uh, Point number two, I personally am attracted to all kinds of human beings regardless of sex or gender, so I'm going to go ahead and use all pronouns interchangeably. Also, any names or other identifying characteristics um, that I use have been changed to either protect the innocent who don't deserve any press they didn't ask for, or to avoid giving the bad eggs any extra airtime. So, pre-van, um, I was a serial monogamist until uh, April of 2017 when I broke up with my long-term boyfriend. Ultimately, we just didn't have uh, the same goals for the future, and I mean, he was great. Uh, we got along very well. We had a lot of things in common, but we just had different goals for the future. Some people don't want to live in a van, and that is okay. I moved into my van in January of 2019, so that was a little over a year and a half of being single in between. And of course, I tried all the dating apps um, pre-van and determined that they didn't really work for me. So when I moved into the van, I had already been off the dating apps for a while. Um, And there's definitely some truth to trying to find someone to date doing the activities that you like to do. So for me, especially as an introvert, deciding to go completely off the apps was a little bit stressful at first, but it pushed me into new situations. It pushed me out of my comfort zone. It allowed me to kind of grow my confidence um, in talking to other people. So specifically for me, I started meeting a lot of people at the gym that I went to. Now, the gym that I went to was very specific. It wasn't just any old YMCA, I uh, had a monthly membership to a climbing gym, and anybody who's ever been to a climbing gym knows that they are not cheap, so uh, that was a good place for me to meet people, because if I meet you at a climbing gym in the bouldering area midday on a Tuesday, that means that we are both investing in uh, the same activity that we feel very strongly about, and it means that we have similar schedules in that we can be there in the middle of the day you know, and not just after a nine to five job. So we already had good things in common and I started kind of poking around and talking to people and it was really hard for me um, because again, I am awfully introverted and I had a lot of social anxiety. 
a few years ago and this is one of the steps that I've taken to kind of get over that a little bit or come to terms with it. So um, I, I did find that I had better success meeting people out in the real world, in the gym, at the crag. Um, as my confidence started building, I would talk to more and more people and um, engage with strangers who soon became friends. I started finding it easier to get numbers and go on dates. Again, none of those really panned out and that's okay. These things happen. So when I moved into the van, that was just another layer of living an authentic life and investing in something that I was really passionate about. And so you would think that if you meet people on the road who are also in the van or in a van uh, or at a van gathering or traveling or any such thing, that you already have those things in common. And that's true, but dating didn't magically get easier once I moved into the van. Again, I moved in in January of 2019. And let's see, I did meet another vanner uh, that first month since I had gone to the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. And there are a lot of like-minded folk who come together in the middle of the desert in January um, to learn and share and not feel alone anymore. So highly recommend you go to that if you happen to be on the road in January uh, around Arizona. It's a great experience. So I went there, I did meet someone. He ended up probably being the worst person that I met that entire first year that I was in the van. Um, so on the one hand, at least I got that shit out of the way. And on the other hand, it, it further proved uh, the point that I knew but had forgotten, um, you know, that humans are humans. And uh, just because y'all have the same lifestyle or you invest in the same activities or, you know, just because somebody might seem good on paper doesn't mean they're going to be a good fit for you in real life. For the remainder of the year, I would meet people on the road uh, organically and we would caravan together for a few days, really no longer than a week at a time because after about a week, you can kind of figure out whether you're good traveling partners or not. And uh, you learn a lot about a person when you travel with them for a week at a time. So I tried here and there. I met a bunch of cool people. I met some people who are friends. I met some people who maybe I don't want to talk to anymore. And that's kind of just part of life. Like it doesn't matter if you're on the road or not. Honestly, I think being single that first year and, uh, you know, trying to date and meeting other people was a really great thing for me emotionally and personally. Um, I definitely put a lot of weight into having a relationship and having somebody else value me and think I was special and want to be with me. And that first year in the van definitely taught me a lot of self-reliance and a lot of my own capability. And I also had gotten to a point in my life that I wasn't going to just be in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship. So I could have been in a number of relationships that year, but I knew that they weren't right for me and therefore did not pursue them. And of course, in the van community, in the road community, the nomad community, just as with any stationary life anywhere, there are poorly behaved humans. <laughs> they don't just avoid living in a van. Some of them gravitate to vans. So you still have to try and navigate that to the best of your ability. My advice to you would be, you know, to give people a chance, but ultimately trust your gut, trust the red flags that you've learned. Um, give people a chance. Don't just judge people right off the bat, but also like take care of yourself and you need to come first. One thing that's very different about van life than sticks and bricks life is that when you're in a van, you become intimate with people really quickly. And I don't mean intimate like you have sex right away, although of course sometimes that happens, but that happens anywhere. I mean that you can't be in my house without also being in my kitchen, in my pantry, in my bedroom, in my closet, in my bathroom. You can't be here without being in all of that. So there's already an element of you're gonna come over for dinner and pop, you're in my life. Um, if you happen to be caravanning or parked with somebody else, you spend so much time with them. It's more than your average neighbor, right? Like 
you live next door to somebody and you kind of know like how they come and go, what their schedules might be, what sports they like to watch, what music they like to listen to if it's all loud enough. But uh, when you're next door to somebody in a van, your lives are very intertwined. Um, often in the van community, we like to share meals, we like to share activities, we like to share a lot of things. And as a result, you just get really close to people really fast. And so sometimes, in a romantic sense, that can be a problem because you don't necessarily have all that buffer time at the beginning of a relationship to kind of like feel someone out or see someone out. You know, you just you just kind of jump in all at once because you don't really have much of a choice because you're already so close emotionally, physically, logistically that time speeds up pretty quickly. So if you're dating somebody for three months in sticks and bricks time and you see them once or twice a week in that amount of time, I mean, that's, that's still less than you would see someone if you parked next to them for a week. You know, seven days of caravanning with someone can be the equivalent of a few months of dating someone when you live in an apartment. So if you're going to be dating on the road or in any other environment where you happen to be very close to people like that very quickly, just be aware of the fact that it exists. And maybe slow yourself down, uh, back up a little bit, give yourself some space and some time to navigate that because it can be a real challenge. Intimacy isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can be mishandled if you trip into it rather than deliberately take the step together towards it. Because you're already living a pretty nomadic, mobile, flexible lifestyle, it can be really easy to start compromising on a lot of things so that you can hang out with this person. And of course, this is something you can do in stationary sticks and bricks life as well, but it seems to be a lot easier and a lot quicker to do it in a van. I have seen some of my friends come together in separate vehicles and then start dating and like three to six months in, like leave one of their vehicles behind or both and then start cohabitating in one. And like I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing, depending on your relationship. At the same time, if you're gonna do it, maybe don't get rid of your vehicle altogether. Maybe put it in storage or leave it at a friend or family member's house so that you have it just in case something else happens. That's way too soon to really know what's going on but you can get caught up in the heat of the moment and in the action and in the momentum. And it can be really easy to kind of let your goals slide. Like if you wanted to go check out the Dakotas, but this person that you're dating wants to go to New Mexico, they're not really in the same area. They're not in the same part of the country. So it might be that one of you starts compromising on the things that you want to do so that you can follow this other person that you want to go with. And maybe, I am speaking primarily from my own experience where I happen to be very good at compromising, sometimes too good, often too good. So I don't want anybody else to fall into that trap and forget that they are their own individual person. So if you find somebody on the road and you fall in love, congratulations, so happy for you, absolutely do what you think you need to do to make that relationship work. And don't get rid of your your own rig, your own security net, just in case it doesn't work. Most relationships don't work. That is just the nature of relationships. And that's okay. It doesn't mean it was a failure. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. All right? Relationships are generally here for a reason. We learn from them. And we can move on once we learn the lesson that we have to. At the same time, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Keep your own basket. Now that I'm about six months into my second year of van life, I have been lucky enough to meet someone who is also in the nomadic community and has a lot of other similarities as I do, and thus far it has been really great. If I could offer any advice to someone who is looking to date in the nomadic community, on the road, in a van, etc., I would say that you need to put yourself out there more than you think you do. And you need, to, you need to be vulnerable, but not in a put yourself in danger kind of way. But you do need to allow people to be themselves. And you need to allow yourself to be yourself. Because like I said before, approaching that level of intimacy really fast can lead to a number of problems, right? Like in the van, 
if I'm cooking a meal, everything in the van smells like that meal. Or somebody might have weird quirks. You might have weird quirks. I have weird quirks. If you're trying to cohabitate in a small space or even in two small spaces, you get to know that about the other person and yourself right, right away. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I do think that being able to get to know somebody at this level of intimacy this rapidly can lead to some of the best relationships ever because you just can't hide from each other and you might as well just be open and expressive and you know you kind of have to take care of yourself in a lot more ways than you would have to in stationary life in a city somewhere with an apartment you have to advocate for your needs you have to know like how low on water you're getting but you also have to be able to communicate your emotional needs because when you're caravanning with somebody and you're that close if you're an introvert like I am Again, you need to be able to say, hey, I need some time alone. I just want to read. Can we be quiet? Take yourself for a hike because I need some time and space. So I think that this lifestyle does have the opportunity to bring about some of the best, most magical relationships. And while I personally don't use dating apps, I don't think they're inherently a bad thing. They just didn't work for me and my personality. It has nothing to do with the efficacy of a dating app or what it is that you're looking for. I have a number of friends, male and female, who use them to connect with people in different states that they're going or in different cities that you're going, either for dating or for hooking up or for maybe finding a place to do laundry or shower or just learn about the city that they're visiting from a local's perspective. I've connected with people in different cities and also a lot of vanners through Instagram. Uh, that's my personal social media channel of choice. I really like the way it does allow me to connect with like-minded folks. If you use a scientific combination of hashtags and geolocations, you can more or less find people who are like-minded in the same area. And as I said before, you have to put yourself out there more. If you're out camping somewhere and you see other vans and, hey, they look like they might be about the same age and maybe I want to go say hi to them, but, oh, I don't want to be in the way. Like, vanners definitely have, like, a lot of unspoken rules about, you know, I'm camping here, please give me my space. But also, vanners are often very friendly people. So if you want to meet other vanners, allow yourself to go meet other vanners. Don't necessarily put all of that pressure on them. I want to also make a quick note about safety. If you are meeting new people in a new city where maybe you don't know them or you don't know where you are, maybe don't lead with the fact that you live in a van. Personally, when I would go on dates with people that didn't already know I lived in a van, I wouldn't necessarily lead with that because I don't need them to know that like all of my belongings are out in the car. Um, I think when you live on the road and when you expose yourself to more experiences and more people, you hone your gut instinct and you hone your ability to suss out whether a person is going to be good to you or not. So highly recommend listening to your gut, listening to your intuition and your instinct, and keeping yourself a little bit safe. It is going to be easy for you to connect with this person if you connect <laughs> anyway um, because of the nature of living this lifestyle and how fast you get to know people. At the same time, there's absolutely no rush in doing that. So if you withhold a little bit of information about yourself just to keep yourself safe and not necessarily let everybody know that you live in that rig that's outside, personally, I think that's a little bit of a safer option. I'm a huge proponent of being deliberately single. No relationship will fill you up more than the one that you have with yourself. So always prioritize that. And if it's been a while since you've been single, maybe you should take some time to, uh, to date yourself, to explore yourself. I do think that the first year of living in the van and being single was really, really good for me. And I think that it's allowing me to have a romance in my life that is as strong and healthy as it is because I'm not relying on somebody else to provide for me. I already know that I'm self-reliant and capable of taking care of my damn self. That said, if you're in a perfectly wonderful relationship right now where all parties are putting forth effort, being caring and taking care of themselves and each other. Keep that shit up. No need to break up relationships that are already awesome. I think it's really magical what can happen when humans come together from a place of love and understanding. And I think that you need to do that for yourself first and then you can start offering it to others. 
So like I said, these are just my notes and my experiences as a single white bisexual female living in a van. And I'm going to have more of these specifically, you know, dating related, but also other logistics about living in a van or living a deliberately alternative lifestyle. So if there's anyone that you would like to hear from or any topics that you would like to hear us discuss specifically or questions that you have, go ahead and leave those in the comments or send me a direct message. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and tune in next week for another phenomenal interview. Thank you. We've reached the end of this episode of Deliberate Living. You can find the show notes and everything we referenced over on my website. And be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts on YouTube or sign up for email updates every time something new is published. I'll see you next time on Deliberate Living. And until then, keep your life on the DL too.